What is up guys, Marcus here from Technic Studios and in today's video I want to show you the best ways to make recordings done in the bad space sound fantastic. Let's get on with it. What is up guys, so let's get straight into this. What you're looking at here is me recording Gahondrum in my office at home. But that's not what's important right now. What's important is rule number one. Rule number one is choose the room that's most applicable to you. And what do I mean by that? By that I mean I'm recording Gahan. Gahan sounds better when it's recorded on a hardwood floor. It just opens up the sound a lot more. You don't get the full tone of qualities when you're recording on a carpeted floor. But I'm guessing the majority of you watching this video aren't going to be recording Gahan. I'm guessing the majority of you are recording vocals, acoustic guitar, or piano. And what do you want to record those on? Well, to be honest with you, the best sound you're going to get at home is a carpeted floor and a very sound absorptive. Is absorptive a word? A room that absorbs sound best. And what do you want for that? You want big squidgy things like sofas and beds that are going to absorb sound a lot better than hard surfaces like, you know, just clear walls and things like that. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that probably your lounge, if you've got a carpeted lounge or a carpeted bedroom, if you're recording vocals, acoustic guitar or boom piano, I'm guessing those are going to be the best rooms for you. What are you watching me do on video right now? What you're listening to me, watching me do is, now I've chosen the room that I want to do it in, which was my study because I wanted a hardwood floor, is listening to the room. And this is rule number two. Make the best of a bad situation. There's a radiator right there and I'm covering it up with my, my lovely Snuggie. And the reason I'm doing that is because the radiator was almost working like a really big plate reverb. It was just, sound was going into it, it was resonating and it was just resonating through the entire room and muddying up the sound so much that I wanted to cover it. You'll also see me cover that giant brown thing in the back left hand corner, which is a giant steel uh, filing cabinet. You can see me looking at it now, I know it's still making the sound, it starts to annoy me. So I go and get a duvet. Just a duvet. So you got my Snuggie and my duvet, two things that you know most people have. Everyone's got a Snuggie. Everyone. Uh, lying around their house. So yeah, rule number two, make the best of a bad situation. You haven't got a home studio, but that doesn't mean that you can't try and make uh, whatever room you're recording in sound better than it does you know, when you walk in there. Uh, you, what you're watching me do right now is I tested the room. So at the very start, you saw me turn the cajon round, seeing where things sounded best. You know, I liked this way facing, there's a window in front of me. I liked that way. I thought it sounded best to my ears. And uh, that's, that's, you know, that's part of it. Listen to the room, improve the room and listen to the room. Where do things sound best? And uh, you're just seeing me now in uh, hyperspeed, just checking it all out and making sure that I made the right decision. So it's kind of like double checking it before I record it, because once you've started recording, you can't change it. It's worth taking the time before you do anything permanent to make sure that you've made the best of the situation. Rule number three, and uh, this is this is the holy grail of how to record tips. And this is just this should just be rule one with everything to do with recording. Even if you're recording in an acoustically sound room like a recording studio, the rule is mic placement is key. And I'll repeat you that. Mic placement is key. Whatever you're doing, mics aren't like your ears. You can't just set a microphone up in a room, face it towards your instrument and get that sound that you get in your ears. You know, the, the full tonal quality, the sound of it echoing uh, around the room. You're not going to get that. So make sure to um, move mics around. Put it in one place, move it around a little bit. Put it in another place, move it around. And just do bits of recording in different places um, with the mics in different places to, you know, see which one sounds best. Then you've got the choice of three different placements. Like, you know, you can go back, listen to them and compare and say, okay, I like it here. This is the sound that I was looking for. I wanted more top end and this is the sound that gives it to me. So what you're seeing me do right here is exactly that. It's just listening to it, moving it around a little bit, listening again. And I just want to quickly point out what you just saw me doing with some sticky notes. 
Uh, basically, when you're recording certain instruments like Cajon, they tend to move about on a hardwood floor, and you don't want that. So it's good to always keep a marker. Where is that instrument? Where am I recording it? You know, So you're not ever close to one mic than the other, and when it moves, because what you want to be able to do is cut and paste between um, individual takes to get one consistent, perfect take. So it's always good to record from the same spot every time, and having markers, whether it be masking tape or sticky notes, is the perfect thing. Hey guys, so I really hope this video has helped. I just want to do a quick recap. Rule number one, choose the space wisely. If you need hardwood floors at home, like if you're recording a drum, which sounds fantastic with a hardwood floor, but not so good on carpet, then obviously you're going to have to use a hardwood floor room. But I would say nine times out of ten, don't use a hardwood floor for things like vocals, acoustic guitar, and uh, piano drum kits because hardwood floors it's like having one big open wall it's just gonna sound is gonna hit it and it's just gonna reflect off everywhere and just get into your mix and make it all kinds of muddy uh, rule number two, yeah, actually no, no, back to rule number one, yes, carpeted floors in that case. Uh, bedrooms with carpet, big, you know, anyway you've got big squidgy things like beds and sofas that can just absorb sound. Bedrooms, um, yeah, lounges, those are the ones that you're looking for. Rule number two, make the best of a bad situation. If you've got radiators like I do in my room, cover the radiator when recording because it will work like one big plate reverb. It'll be knocking sounds all over the shop and you definitely don't want that. If you've got big steel lamps, anything that can be moved out of the room which you think might make a sound, get it out of the room. Make the best of a bad situation. And uh, rule number three, rule number three is key. And that is that mic placement is the key. <laughs> uh, definitely take a sample recording of your mic in one place, move it, take another sample recording, move it again, take another sample recording, and then um, choose your favorite one. Which sound are you looking for? That's what you need to keep in mind. Okay, what sound do I want? And uh, yeah, choose which one's most applicable to you and uh, which sound recording you think's best because recording and mixing and engineering and producing is all such a personal thing. Everyone has different tastes. Uh, one thing's really going to help, I'm going to put a link in the description to the Recording Engineer's Handbook. It's a free downloadable PDF book and uh, all you've got to do, if you open up the PDF, they'll have all the chapters on the right hand side and say, okay, I'm recording guitar, go to the, the chapter on guitar and it'll tell you about five different uh, producers' views on how they like to record guitar, uh, what mics they use, what polar patterns they use in the mics, all that kind of stuff is really going to help you out. It helps me out every time I have to record a new instrument, I always go check it out instantly. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like button, really helps us out. Um, definitely subscribe to see more of these videos. If you have a question, hit us up in the comments or head over to Facebook, Technic Studios. Uh, I've obviously got Facebook on my phone, so as soon as I see I've got a notification, I instantly jump on. And if there's a question on there, I'll hit you straight back up with the answer. And uh, there's nothing else really to say apart from I'll see you next time.